hi we are going to now talk about uh, the international convergence of capital measurement and capital standard so we'll look at basel 2 and uh, we'll understand the three pillar three tier capital definition and the conceptual difference between standardized approach and international rating based approach uh, this is uh, just after the stress testing part and uh, we look at how we manage this stress test. Uh, one thing that I found interesting here was uh, that uh, uh, things like high frequency trading uh, is still considered in uh, the operational risk. Uh, so that's uh, uh, not uh, the market risk and things like that. Uh, maybe you can categorize that into IT. That was something that's uh, worth researching. But other than that, we'll look at some of the historical things or something that uh, you'll see in the FRM part two exam. So let's look at the banking regulation. So we are looking for the banking regulation to protect the depositor, uh, provide stability and avoid contagion effect and maintain the stability in the uh, economy. So uh, uh, the banks are uh, considered in the too big to fail category because if the bank fail then there is a contagion effect uh, to the economy, other banks and many things. So. Uh, uh, when the Basel started, uh, we were looking at things like in terms of the cookie ratio uh, where we say that capital upon risk weighted assets must exceed 8%. Uh, so if you have got capital and we'll look at the tier 1, 2, 3 capital and the weights given to them again. Uh, so you'll have, you should have 8% of your risk weighted assets. By risk weighted assets, we mean that we are going to weight our assets, attach a risk to them and there is a whole process to attach risk to them. Uh, earlier uh, it was only uh, the market risk for assets that we used to take but then we moved on to sorry earlier we were using credit risk and then we used on to the market risk so uh, uh, things that changed in Basel 2 was that uh, this 8% capital requirement it was quite easy the risk buckets were homogeneous so all corporate bonds face the same charge the cookie ratio was too simple we're not looking at solvency test and potentially risk reducing diversification in the loan was ignored off balance sheet items were not recognized so the basel 2 is aimed uh, now at large institutional banker and subsidiaries holding companies operating uh, and also the security firms so we have also categorized the trading uh, desk uh, but the primary goal of basel 2 is to provide more precise classification of risk level between bank since bank greatly varied in sophistication credit exposure, the bucket approach of basket was was very simplistic. So in addition, uh, we needed uh, a kind of a flexible system to accommodate the changes and innovation in the financial market as well as risk management practices that were lacking. So in that we had the standardized approach. Uh, essentially, uh, uh, we uh, used the same original Basel 1 accord but the risk weighting were based on characteristic of each borrower and we used the S&P rating. The internal rating base, foundation and advanced are two great uh, two approaches where foundation approach is used as a hybrid of internal and external and bank use estimates of default quality but use uh, uh, external sources for modeling imposed such as loss given default and regulators often give these information and then we have the internal based uh, approach uh, we generate our own uh, loss given default and everything so we have three pillars in basel 2 accord the first pillar is highly quantitative assessment of capital requirement for the bank and the main focus here is the credit and operation risk uh, intertwined capital adequacy uh, the pillar 2 is regulators and the pillar 3 is uh, focus on capital market as external monitors of market so how we calculate the capital requirement is something that's quite interesting to see here so we take the total capital of the bank divided by total risk weighted assets so total capital uh, uh, if you move towards a general scenario it's like uh, uh, the money you have uh, divided by uh, the assets uh, weighted by the risk so uh, if you have eight rupees in in your uh, pocket versus uh, uh, you have given loan to some people and uh, those loans uh, would give you like a uh, uh, hundred rupees uh, and you have eight rupees with you so kind of uh, eight rupees upon the hundred rupees that uh, you will get from other guy uh, which you have given as loan if you assume that uh, he is going to give you back for sure 
and then uh, uh, adjust the eight rupees that you have because uh, in real terms this eight rupees is quite complicated it might have treasury cash a lot of other things something that that again inherent some risk and your denominator the money that you are going to get again has some uh, risk factors attached to this so uh, uh, in order to compute the risk weighted asset we start with risk versus asset for credit risk uh, the calculation of risk weighted credit risk is simple as the sum of credit risk multiplied by corresponding risk weight when we add the capital charge for market and operational risk uh, 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 we do it uh, uh, either by uh, this 8% or 12.5 so risk weighted for market and operational risk we need to divide the capital charge amount by 8% or alternatively multiply by 12.5 in other words if you already know the capital charge for market or operational risk we would uh, it must be amount to 8% of the risk weighted asset so if suppose a sum of risk weighted uh, assets uh, uh, for credit is like 1500 and uh, the capital charge uh, requirement is 30 and the operational charge requirement is 50 so it would be like 30 plus 50 into 12.5 and adding that to the credit part so it's like 2500 so the bank must host 200 in capital in order to satisfy this requirement now uh, the uh, standardized approach irb approach are different where uh, uh, we calculate uh, all these risk weights and uh, other things by ourselves. So in the standardized approach, as we talked about that we'll use the rating agency, we have got different weights assigned to AAA double pay bond. So we'll use the capital based on that and uh, uh, then we'll use uh, to find out the cookie ratio. The IRB approach uh, has potential to reduce the capital requirement because bank has uh, got its own philosophy of uh, calculating things. So, uh, but there are again some uh, catches here like uh, it could not be less than 90% of the capital requirement of ATC or 80% of the uh, last two years. So here the risk weighted asset will be capital requirement into 12.5 into exposure uh, at default and uh, uh, the collateral is not reduced from EAD under IRB approach but it is deducted under standardized approach. The calculation of capital is itself a function of loss given default, priority of default and maturity adjustment factor and the exact formula is gained k is equal to uh, lgd into pd into f of m comma b so uh, each input in capital requirement described in a bit more detail so loss given factor is an important thing here probability of default how would we calculate that uh, what is the shape of the probability of default symmetric factor idiosyncratic factors and derivation is complex uh, uh, and based on worst can systematic draw and then the maturity adjustment so we'll calculate all these by using our own mechanism to calculate our risk weighted assets now uh, there are different ways to do the same for uh, credit risk uh, market risk and different kind of uh, uh, assets that we have so for the market risk uh, we'll use the back tested war and we'll use the stressed war and for the credit risk we'll use another method and the same for operational risk so that's what we are going to look at so the whole idea is to focus on the numerator and the denominator we are focusing on the denominator that's the risk weighted assets here i'll continue from here in the second video